Sometimes we're interested in finding the area of an irregular, irregular shape, such as this kidney shape that I have on the screen. Um, you know, maybe it's a swimming pool, but it, the units aren't given, so that's kind of um, a silly thing. Um, but anyway, I can do this by the tra using the trapezoidal rules and or the Simpson rule. Um, I'm going to first demonstrate the use of the trapezoidal rule and essentially what it does is it takes this kidney shape and when you draw parallel lines through the kidney shape touching the edges, so these are all supposed to be parallel lines, it thinks of this as adding up a bunch of trapezoids, so kind of a trapezoid right here kind of a trapezoid right here where you would straighten these out. I might show you the proof here um, when we're all done, but I'd like to show you the formula for the area of an irregular shape using the trapezoidal rule. It says to take the height divided by 2, and the height is the distance between the parallel lines. In this particular problem, it's 6.9. And then multiply that by the summation of the sum of the first line uh, which is called y sub naught. In any science class, when you have a subscript of zero, it means the starting point or the initial value. So y sub naught is my starting line, this 10.1. Then in the trapezoidal rule, you'll take 2 times the next line. So this 26.5 represents the line that's called y sub 1. And then 2 times this one. So 2 times the next line. So these are just going to go up now. This is my first starting line, the next one, the next one, and you just go on depending on how many lines you've put on your drawing. For the trapezoidal rule, you can have any number. It doesn't matter if you have 7 or 8 or 9. With the Simpsons rule, you have to have an odd number of lines. In this particular problem, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So again, I've drawn nine lines on this, so that means I can do this problem by both the trapezoidal rule and in a bit when I show you the Simpsons rule. So, um, you know, what happens? you you got to keep going. Well, the last line is called y sub n. So that's what, we, in mathematics, that's what we would use for a subscript to demonstrate the last or the stopping point, the finish. So way back here at the very end, I'm going to have a y sub n. No, not two times it, because notice this y sub naught did not have two times it. But the line before this last one of 6.1 is called y sub n minus 1. And I do have to multiply 2 times y sub n minus 1. Okay, why these sub n's and sub n minus 1's? Let's say in this particular problem, I believe I counted those up and I said that that was the ninth line. Well, if I put a 9 right here in for y sub n, n minus 1. If I put a 9 in there, 9 minus 1 is 8. So that would be representative of the line that's called y sub 8, or the one before the last. Again, the last one's the ninth line. The one before that one would be the eighth line. So we use this y sub n and y sub n minus 1. Okay, let's actually put the data in. So let's go ahead and put the numbers into this problem. So we have to put the height in, which is the 6.9. It's the distance between the parallel lines. So I'm telling you that all of these lines are spaced 6.9 units apart. The first line, is its value is 10.1. Then 2 times the next line, which is 26.5. Be careful, maybe hold your finger as you're over these numbers as you're copying them because it's easy to copy this wrong. This wrong. So 2 times the 31, and 2 times the 32, and 2 times the 30, and 2 times the 28.9, and 2 times the 29.5. I'll often wrap this around because I'm going to run out of space here. And then I'm going to have plus 2 times the 25.8. Finally, the last line, 6.5, does not get a 2 multiplied by it. All right, let's demonstrate the calculation of this using our calculator. I'm going to see if I can get both the calculator on the screen and most of this. Let's see how I do. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be possible. I'll probably move the calculator a little bit um, 
down as, as we go. But this is the calculation I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to demonstrate it right here on the calculator. The simplest way, not make any mistakes, is to go 6.9 divided by 2. Don't need for parentheses. I'm going to open right here, open parentheses, 10.1 plus 2 times in parentheses. Well, you know that parentheses 2 times the 26.5 right here? I'm just going to use the time symbol because by order of operations, this calculator knows that it should do this multiplication before it does this addition. So I don't need those parentheses. They're to represent multiplication. So plus 2 times 26.5 plus 2 times 31 plus 2 times 32 plus 2 times 30 plus 2 times 28.9 plus 2 times 29.5 and now I'm off the screen I'm, I'm below the calculator I'm going to keep going plus 2 times 25.8 Eight. Finally, plus the last line, which was 6.5. So what you would, and then I better close my parentheses because I opened them right here. That's this parenthesis right here, and then I had to close it right there. So I closed it right there. I'm going to hit enter on my calculator right now. The answer is 1,462.8 units, square units. So I've calculated using trapezoidal rule the area of this shape. I think I'm going to um, go on and um, maybe close this video, actually. Um, let's write down our answer, 1,462.8 square units. And I'm going to demonstrate the very same problem using Simpson's rule now. And I want you to kind of, hopefully you've taken some good notes, you've tried this. Notice this, this value, 1462.8. We're going to do the same problem, but Simpson's rule is going to uh, result in a more accurate value for the area than is trapezoidal rule.